It doesn't matter what softwares you know today, because with time, every technical skill gets outdated. What truly stays with you are the core principles, your mindset, and the way you think about your subject. Welcome to the Foundations for UX Design, a 15-episode series that will take you through all the important lessons and realizations I've had so far as a self-taught UX designer. My name is Ansh Mehra, and I am a product designer and storyteller at Zuddle.com, which is a virtual events hosting platform. In this session, we will be learning some of the most common mistakes students make when they begin their career as a UX designer. I hope you've seen all videos from the series preceding this episode. With that being said, I hope you enjoy this session. So, without wasting any further time, let's get started. All right, welcome to lecture eight. Today we're going to discuss layouts, spacings, and grids, a concept that is often ignored when students are just entering this field, especially because there are so many ways to look at one single concept that there is a lot of confusion around each of the individual fundamental concepts. So, how will we learn this entire concept? There are three things that we will cover. First is that we'll cover the fundamentals and the core concepts because once you know those. A lot of confusion simply goes away. I will share some popular confusions and some popular misconceptions uh, that I regularly get when people ask me questions around this topic, and I will list the most practical and the most most useful and easy to understand resources for you to read after you finish this video. So we will not go very deep into the technical aspects, but I will show you and take you through all the misconceptions and the common myths. So. This is going to be supremely, supremely interesting because spacing and layout is something that is not very visible. When you go through a UI, you can't really see the grid system or you can't really see the column layouts, but it's there. And the only reason why it's so difficult to understand how these things work is simply because they're not very apparent when you're using interfaces. So we'll jump onto the iPad. The most important concept here is of the column width. So the basic funda is that you divide your entire screen into columns, and these columns have a fixed width, so they never really change. You're absolutely free to choose whatever width you want, but I'll tell you what is the common width that people use for a column. So as you move from one device to another, for example, I have a desktop frame here followed by an iPad screen. You will change the number of columns. But the width never changes. So this is a window from Figma on the right side. If you choose a frame, if you add column, this is what you see. You have an option to put in the count. You have an option to select the color. This is usually around fifty percent, so that it becomes like an overlay on top of your elements. Then you have a type, which should be center by default, just for this discussion. And you can read more upon all the different categories. But by default, keeping it center is the right choice. And this is the width of the column. Now, in most cases, people have sixty to eighty pixels as the column width, and it is not a very hard and fast rule, but it is recommended to keep it sixty-five. It's a good column width, but you can also follow systems like Tailwind or Bootstrap and go through their documentations as to what column layouts do they use. So. in these discussions it's very important that you sit with your developer and take him or her through this entire process now we also have this thing called as gutter which is basically the space between your columns so if this is my entire screen i have basically put in 12 columns here 1 2 till 12 and the space in between them is my gutter now as you move from mobile to tablet the number of columns decrease so you might have 12 columns on your desktop Eight on your tablet and four on your mobile. The outer gutters, which are at the left and right, they are called as side margins, which are usually around twenty to thirty pixels on desktops. Now, once you know that I have twelve columns to fill, the next concept is of parent containers. So there are different sections in your website, and you have text and your images. But what you have to do is you have to understand: Are there any blocks of content that can sit on these columns? 
so they can be just images they can be just text or they can be a group of these items as well but in this example you can see that there are 12 columns and there's this big box that sits on 12 columns here then there is another container which basically sits on one two three four five six and here there are four of them which basically means 12 divided by 4 that is three columns per parent container so you can divide 12 into multiple areas that is why they've chosen this number so that you can divide into 12 and 6 you can also mix things up but here is where the confusion kicks in a lot of people believe that this column structure these parent containers define the boundary of your ui element which is not the case in this example i'm going to show you how do we actually understand the functioning of the column layout because most people think that following a column layout means that every element should visually end at the edges of their column. That is not how it works. So if this is my website and I have two containers here, I'm basically just making an example when I'm talking about my videos. So even though this is the container and it sits at the edge of my column, visually, this is the area that would have some text or some matter. So there is some external padding that you cannot see. So if I disable this column, you would feel that, oh, this doesn't look like it is sitting directly on the column because if you look at it in that perspective, you would say that, hey, this content ends here, but my column was here, the next column edge was here. So how are you following the column layout? I am following the column layout, but the thing is that this entire parent container, if this is my parent container, the content inside it has this padding. So in reality, even that child container, if these are different children, they also have their siblings and they have some spacing in between as well. So that is absolutely okay. You can do nesting once you're inside that specific parent container. Now, the next step is to read all the articles that I'm going to mention you, mention you now. I have read them and I've genuinely benefited a lot from all of these articles and it took me a lot of time to find them. So I've gone through so many articles that you wouldn't even believe. But the articles that I'm going to tell you right now are extremely powerful. Once you read them, once you make notes from them, you will have so many things sorted out. So this article here by Christy Tang is going to give you a walkthrough of responsive grids and different kinds of layouts. And it's available on Medium and make sure you make proper notes because it's absolutely golden. And I will put all links in the description. Uh, they're all available. The second concept is understanding spatial systems. Now we earlier did columns. Now we're talking about spacing. Now there are many ways to do this, but I'm going to cover one concept that is not often discussed popularly. And there are many ways to add spacing. Some people say that we will add a spacing of eight pixels. Some say four pixels, some even follow two pixels. It depends on how dense your UI is. So for platforms that are very spacious, very breathable, they follow a system of eight pixels. So it means that every button might be eight pixels away. You can't have anything closer to closer than less than eight pixels, right? So you can't have anything which is just six pixels apart. So they said that we want to have that Y where everything is very spacious. So we'll follow an eight pixel. In some cases, people say that, no, our entire platform is very content heavy. We have so many numbers and so many elements and we have a dashboard and all this stuff. So they follow a four point grid. But uh, whatever that is, whatever that is that you follow, there are some things that you have to understand and they are beyond that number. For example, there are two ways to approach the concept of padding. One is element first and the other is content first. So I've chosen a very easy example. We'll first cover content first padding. Just assume that this is a table which has these three rows and they are basically mentioning my YouTube videos. So you have three columns like this. Now notice what happens for episode one because that title string is really long. It basically increased the height of this row item. So even though I've specified some padding here, it made sure that content is accommodated. It never truncates the content. So accommodating the entire content is the first priority. Then your padding is added. So in these cases, the height of that row varies. But then the second approach is element first padding. 
in element first padding we say that we don't care what the content is our priority is to make sure that the elements are uniform so if i've said that this is the only padding and the only height that is allowed then it would keep things uniform and basically truncate the string so even though this is not directly related to your eight point decision or four point decision these are some concrete steps or concrete highlights that you have to you know figure out with your developer as to understand as to how things would behave as you accommodate different strings this also comes under your spatial systems so to understand spatial systems there are two articles that i would recommend one is by elliot dal i hope that i'm pronouncing his name right it's on designsystems.com which is a wonderful website there is so much to learn but they have this article on space grids and layouts extremely extremely powerful and it would clear so many things about just the basics of grids and then there's a medium article which is everything you need to know as a ui designer about spacing and layout grids uh i have again the name gives it away but again very very strong article uh i just wanted to touch one single concept within grids i think most designers know how grids work it's basically a bunch of guidelines right so you try to stick within those boxes if you zoom into a photoshop uh canvas you'd realize that everything is made up of pixels so it's just like a bounding box sort of a thing but uh, you would have heard me say that the, there's an eight point grid or a four point grid why do i say the word point and why do i not say the word pixel there's a difference between both of them and uh, just to make it simpler for you there are two popular systems two popular systems of grids there are hard grids and then there are soft grids but before even understanding what are hard grids and what are soft grids we have to understand what is a point now point is a very very basic way of measuring space but they are dependent on your screen resolution so this is how it works if i say that i am looking at a screen of 1x resolution one point is basically one pixel tall and one pixel wide so in 1x resolution one point is equal to one pixel pretty straight forward but at 2x resolution one point will be equal to four pixel why not two because we are doubling the pixel on both the x axis and the y axis because when i say that this is one point it basically has two pixels as its y axis and then two pixels on the x axis so you basically get four pixels fit inside one point and you know you can do the math for 3x as well one point would become nine pixels so i don't know if you've noticed sometimes when you export svgs not svgs you can't export svgs in 1x 2x or 3x because they are vector files this entire concept comes in vectors uh sorry pngs which are raster because pngs pixelate so when you export something in 3x you would realize that you have this very big image because they increase the size of pixels so if i am exporting a jpeg at 1x it would look like this and when i export it at 3x it would look like this but on the phone screen you know if this is an iphone and this iphone is say at 3x resolution the image size would essentially remain the same because it squeezes that big jpeg into that small space because it needs 9 pixels for that one point so you need a very big image to look clear in that small area simply because that screen resolution is at 3x then just to give a quick overview of what is a hard grid or what is a soft grid hard grid is basically stacking everything like bricks and material design explains this really well but in soft grids there are no bricks there are no boxes you position elements relative to each other i'll tell you how it works the first example is of a hard grid where this is my card right you can see that this is a card and then you have your picture probably a title followed by some description let me erase all of this in a hard grid we are respecting the parent container and the padding that comes with it so we say that okay i am following this 8 pixel guide 
the everything is under this 8 pixel and there are these check boxes here and they're not visible in this case because when I exported it from Figma, the grid wasn't exported. But basically, it is absolutely touching the edges of the grid. Like you can't do anything outside the grid, right? So this has to touch this grid. This has to touch this grid. Everything is under that grid. And you have, you know, paddings and multiples of 8. In a soft grid, you don't care if there are any bricks or not. You say that this name is probably... 8 pixels away or this is probably 4 pixels away right or this is probably 32 pixels away so it's all relative to one element to another so it just makes things easier and a lot of people are actually shifting to soft grid simply because that is how things happen on code as well like you don't have like this brick structure in everything in every code so I find a lot of developers saying that, you know, soft grid is, is, is a better approach, but you know, this is something that you have to sit with your developer and understand what are they comfortable with. So there's only one extremely awesome article that you have to read to clear this concept. And that is available on spec.fm and it's called the eight point grid. And I'm going to put the link in description, but this article will clear a lot of doubts. Now I've kept this session and the upcoming sessions very minimal, very to the point simply because I want you guys to go through these resources on your own and make your own notes. So I'm going to pick all the confusing topics, all the misconceptions, like things that people usually miss out. But for the common stuff, for things that are very fundamental, you can definitely follow the resources. You don't need me to teach you all of those things. Now, before I leave, I'm going to tell you guys, as I always do, that all the premium sessions are live on Graphy. So if you're willing to learn some complementary skills, there are specific capsule sessions that would give you a lot of value in just like 40 to 45 minutes. So we have sessions on interface design. We have sessions on documentation on Notion, which is actually my favorite tool. So I take you through whatever I document and how things help me you know when i document things and how do i structure everything that i learn then there's a session on learning fast and earning more which is basically how do you pick things quickly and how do you monetize your knowledge in the marketplace and then there's a session on how to get a design job that pays you well because it's great to know all of these tools but it's actually extremely extremely important to understand how do you pitch yourself and how do you pitch your services so that you get paid well as a designer then if you're a fan of systems in Figma and if you have opened your own brand on Instagram, there is an episode on how I use Figma for my social media carousels, how I've built a system, how do I capture myself, what is the cost of the equipment, everything in very, very granular details, but it's very actionable, very practical. And then we have a cohort sort of a thing on Friday nights at 9.45 p.m. Uh, where I discuss my notes from Notion. I read a lot of interesting things and there are so many things that I collect over time. So it's just this place where we come together and I have a session of 45 minutes followed by a Q&A where we answer all kinds of interesting questions. So you, these sessions have unlimited replays. So once you buy them, you can watch them again and again. And all information is going to be available on anshmara.graphy. With that... If you like this video, make sure you like it, make sure you subscribe and make sure you comment your review because when you do that, YouTube helps me reach more people. If you put a story on Instagram, make sure you tag me on anshmehra.work and on Twitter, I am anshmehra with three A's at the end. With that being said, I will leave you now. I'm so happy that you've made up all of this accumulation and you've reached to this point. There have been long episodes, there have been short episodes, but you've been very loyal. I'm very happy. Keep learning, keep designing awesome stuff and I will see you guys later. Thank you. Bye. If you like this video, make sure you click on like and hit the subscribe button. I regularly upload videos on UX design, marketing and storytelling.